So how does the 2017 iMac right here perform in 2019 and 2020? Stay tuned. Alrighty, so let's get into this. So this is a 2017 and it's actually 2019. I actually got the base model and this is the 27 inch base model. So it's got the uh, 3.4 i5 in it. It's got one, uh, eight gigs of RAM, which is the uh, you know DDR RAM. So that's not, not too shabby, but I'm, I'm gonna upgrade that soon. But first I wanna go through the base, you know, the base model. It's got a uh, Radeon Pro 570 with four gigs of RAM. I did five again, it's four. <laughs> so um, four gigs of RAM on the video card, uh, eight gigs of RAM on the computer itself. And uh, let me think what else does it have. It actually has the brilliant 5K screen, which is incredible. So I'll get into that in a second, but you know, you can't beat that 5K screen. You can't, that's one of the reasons I bought it. And uh, you know, obviously the one thing it does have is it has the fusion drive. It's got a one terabyte fusion drive. which I want to get into in here in a second. And you guys can see up here, I have two different hard drives up here. Um, and I'm going to go through these, but I do have a SSD that's basically an MVME, MVME M.2 from uh, Inland. It's basically at Micro Center. It's a, a 500 gig. I got it for about 50 bucks. And then I got a one terabyte um, QVO from Samsung over here, a one, uh, one terabyte SSD. And I'm going to explain what I'm going to do with those in a second to make this thing a lot faster. So let's get back to the Fusion Drive. And so the Fusion Drive, I'm gonna show you here in a couple seconds, so stay tuned with me, but I'm gonna show you guys a couple examples of how it performs. On paper, using Blackmagic, it's gonna come back and it's gonna tell you it does fairly well. But in reality, it's got a little bit of uh, you know stuttering and things like that sometimes because it, you know I think it only has a 32 gig cache in it of SSD, and then the rest I think is 5400 uh, drive for the fusion that I fused together. So if you're using small applications and things like that, then it, you know usually it goes pretty quickly. The you know loading the OS goes pretty quickly and stuff like that. But beyond that, it gets a little bit more uh, you know in depth. So. It's something that you have to consider when buying the Fusion Drive if you want that space. But I'm going to go ahead and later and in a couple more videos in the future show you how I'm going to upgrade to these over here. And I'll do that you know, in, in, in different videos. But first I wanted to kind of show you the base. Alright, so why did I buy this? Well, one thing is, is basically I got this right now from Best Buy. It actually matched uh, Micro Center. I got it for $13.99. So $13.99, a brand new iMac, 27 inch, 5K. Again, it's the base model and it's the 2017 version. So it's basically the late to mid 2017 version. But it does have some, you know, it definitely has four cores and, you know, the CPU and things like that. It's not a two core or anything like that. So it's definitely good for video. Here's a good look at the system. It's obviously just like any other iMac you've seen. Brilliant 5K screen, but nothing really special. I mean, obviously the bezels are getting a little bit old, but nice screen to look at. You also do get the, uh, the keyboard here and you get the Magic Mouse 2 that come included in the package and a couple little cables for charging and things like that, but nothing much else besides that. Alrighty, so here's the desktop of the new uh, 2017 iMac, and again, it's the base model. Let's go ahead and start down here. Let's go to Launchpad, and what we're going to do is let's go into Blackmagic. Let's take a look at the one terabyte uh, Fusion Drive. Let's see what it can pull again. This is kind of not always correct, so I'm going to show you why. Let's go ahead and just start this right out of the blue. As you can see, it's going to go up somewhere in the 800s for the writes, and um, let me see what it does here in the reads in a second. But the writes, you know, it's 872. Now it's saying it's coming in at 12, you know, 12, what is this, 1200, close to there, um, on the reads, and then it's going to go ahead and do writes again, and that's going to be around, you know, it's going to be, be a little bit different set here, but it's going to be in the 800s. And then again, the reads here is going to be around 12, 1300 this time. Um, I've noticed if I basically keep doing things in the background and doing other tasks and loading a lot of applications, this thing can get down to only a couple hundred, like one or two hundred. So this isn't always the most accurate test, I'm telling you. Um, things don't respond this way. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use those disks I showed earlier to upgrade this and boot to an external drive on this machine and uh, make this a lot, lot faster. But for now, this is sufficient. You can see these numbers. I mean, these numbers aren't real. Again, this is Fusion, so it's only using a small portion. That portion is probably just being used for this test. And I'll go ahead maybe run this again with a lot of applications open later and we'll see if it does the same thing. 
there's that. Um, down here you can see basically, if you can see my mouse um, down here, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a couple things. You can see how long things take to launch. Here's Safari, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. So you see it was only one, one quick jump and it's open. Again, it really depends on if this is in cache on that Fusion Drive. So that was really quick. Sometimes I get a little bit more bounces on that, but you can see that was pr pretty, pretty quick. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now here's Google Chrome here. Let's go ahead and open Google Chrome. Again, that was maybe one bounce only and everything's opened up. So let's go ahead and go to um, a different website just to see, let's go to a news website. Um, and we can see everything in here. So basically everything loads fairly quickly. Um, you know, obviously it depends on your internet connection and things like that, but so far so good. So browsers actually load pretty quickly and things like that. So that's not an, you know, not, not an issue at all. So let's go ahead and shut down again, Google Chrome, and let's go ahead and shut down file Safari. We're gonna quit Safari. So again, this is not the biggest test in the world here. Um, obviously there's gonna be better tests in this. I'm just showing you some real world usage type things. Um, let's go ahead and open iMovie now. I use that quite a bit, so one, two, and now it's opened. So that's it, and I'm kind of actually doing this video right now, right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that video that I'm working on, and you're gonna see it. So as we open that up, you can see how fast that is. Fairly fast, I mean, so so what I'm getting at is, you know, in 2017 iMac, you know, the base model with the Fusion Drive is plenty fast for what you have to do. If you're actually going through videos, look at this. I mean, you can scrub through anything. This is only 1080p, 30, but still, I mean, obviously most older systems can do that too. But I mean, you can really scroll through this thing really quickly and it's gonna, you know, cause no problems whatsoever. So it's gonna be a very fast system for video editing, even up to 4K. Um, but I'm gonna make it faster with a different couple of videos in the future of some faster hard drives. I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this. There we go. A couple of the things we can do, I guess, is let's go into uh, Finder. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, a lot of people use things like Keynote and things like that. I mean, this is going to just show you how fast I click, you know, how fast it'll load something like Keynote. Um, there it is. And then I'll double click on this and we'll see how long that takes to open up. So again, it's got a little bit of a lag, but not much. Um, everything you're going to be doing in here is going to be very quick. Uh, nothing to really worry about as far as speed, um, but let's go ahead and uh, you know let's just show maps again. And maps are really quick. Again, it's going to be your internet connection, so um, you know how fast the things load on maps and stuff is going to be dependent more on your internet connection. But anything that you want to do on this system is very capable uh, for what we're talking about right here. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up a bunch of stuff here. Um, there's Chrome. Here's Safari. Um, and let's go open up iMovie. So iMovie is going to take a little bit longer. Actually, we'll get booted into that. So, and then if we go back into here and we actually get back into Black Magic here, let's go ahead and take a look at with all these things open. If we get any differences in speed, no, it's still it's still in the 870s. It says you know supposedly. Again, it's not you know I have a 2011 iMac. Check out some of my other videos where I booted off an external drive. And if you check those videos out, I mean, that, that actually seems snappier in some cases of booting up applications and stuff than this does, even though these numbers are way, way higher. So it's a little bit misleading on this system. Just, you know, obviously with the Fusion Drive, you're giving up something and you got to basically take it with a grain of salt for sure. Um, but anyways, let me go ahead and close out of these things and then we'll kind of continue here. All right, so really quickly, here's the uh, details of this iMac. You can go ahead and take a quick peek at this, but basically it looks like it's roughly a 4731 on the single core Geekbench 4 scores, and then Geekbench 4 multi-core is about 14,000. I've seen it anywhere from 14,000 to 13,827, somewhere in that range. So that's actually pretty good. It turbo boosts, even though it's a 3.4, it's a quad core 3.4, turbo boosts up to 3.8, and uh, it has support up to 64 gigs of RAM, and it has PC 4, 9200, DDR, 2400 megahertz speed on the RAM. Again, mine came with eight gigs. Um, it's very easy to upgrade in the back, so that's a very easy. It's got a, a Radon Pro 570. Um, that's got four gigs of RAM. The screen's 5120 by 2880, so it's a full 5K, brilliant resolution. It can uh, do dual mirroring also. Um, it's got the Fusion Drive, and it's got the 32 gig SSD here on the one S, you know, basically part of the one terabyte drive. Again, it, you know, it's kind of misleading though. And uh, if you go down here, basically, you know, there's a number of different ports. Uh, it does have two USB-C type two ports. Um, and uh, some other things like that. So definitely check it out. You can get all those specs, obviously, if you go ahead and check it out. This is actually one on everymac.com. Um, it's a great website to look up all your Mac integration stats and all that kind of stuff. So just uh, definitely take a look at that when you get a chance. All right, just really quickly again, just to see some basic tasks I wanna show everyone. So let's go into Safari. 
really quick and then let's go up here to let's say YouTube again it's gonna depend on your internet connection mine's pretty quick but still um, make sure that I go in there clicking on the wrong thing here so once you're on YouTube I mean obviously this thing can play just about anything on here everything should be fairly fast um, you know and uh, everything should load quickly the text on here is ahead and turn that down giving a free ad there for Grammarly um, but basically if you look at any type of these things it can play everything perfectly clear the screens incredible again at that you know 5k um, no problems with YouTube uh, you can obviously play back at 4k on YouTube as well no problems whatsoever so the system's really really responsive from my you know just from my initial response and in using it um, so I would definitely recommend it I'm gonna try to make this faster by booting off an, uh, an external soon so um, and I'll have videos on that so just keep that in mind all right, so would I buy this, you know, for $13.99 instead of spending like $18.99 or $2,000, over $2,000 for the newest one? If you're a basic editor and you do just basic tasks and things like that, definitely for $13.99, it's, it's a great, great pickup. I would highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to show you the speed differences when I install those different SSDs later, but for now, it's it's a great you know pickup, and I and I totally recommend it for the price. Just that screen alone, you know, this screen that's right here. Um, you know, if you looked at something like a Samsung or a, I think an LG screen that you needed for an external, it would cost like 1,300 bucks just for the screen, and you're getting this entire computer involved as well. So this is a you know just an incredible deal, um, very responsive system. So I'd highly recommend it for 1399. That's just kind of my my overall uh, view of this. Alrighty, so I hope that actually helps everybody out a little bit. I just wanted to show you what you can get for $13.99 right now, and in 2019, 2020, is a 2017 iMac going to cut it, or do you need the, the latest and greatest? Obviously, you're going to probably run into some situations where the new design might come out soon, and you're going to maybe next year it's going to come out. These may even drop even more at that point because they've got the old design. But more and more, I mean, I just want to show people that you don't need to have this, you know, $4,000, $5,000 computer to run 4K editing and things like that. You hear all these people online. They tell you all these things like, oh, you need this, you need this. I want, you know, everything has to be faster, the best video cards and things. But really, if you're, if you're willing to wait another 20 seconds or in some cases, five or 10 minutes, I mean, you know, if your whole life doesn't depend on it, these things run great and you really can get away with saving a lot of money if you're on a budget for sure. Alrighty, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys can support my channel, it's going to really help me out. I do, you know, a couple of videos a week. I do it on, uh, you know, a lot of Apple products, also any type of technology. I also do investing videos, which you can check out. And uh, beyond that, I guess, what else? Do I travel videos too. So please subscribe if you can. Help me out. I'm trying to get my subscriber base out so I can continue. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.